Making a life worth living and retirement worth having is about the people in our lives. It's about the people who say they care for our lives, and it's about the people who show up time and time again and say, still here, still loving you, still know you're mad, but it's okay. I'm going to stay here until you stop being mad. And isn't that what people do? They say that, but do they mean it? You see, practically when someone's mad, the person who they're mad at has to know why they're mad at them. And sometimes in life, we don't know exactly why someone's mad at us. And that can be tough. There's someone I love deeply who tells me she's mad at me based on the way she responds to me or ignores me. She once told me that she might forgive me, and I literally texted back or typed back, what do I have to do to get forgiven? And that's sort of a comical thing com coming from a Christian man to a Christian woman, that literally Jesus died for my sins, so what other sins do I have to produce or an apology for so that I'm just as good as you in front of the Lord. Now, I sort of giggle a little bit about that because I once wrote a piece long ago about how the time of Easter was a time for forgiveness. And at that moment of time, we had had a sort of discord, and she sort of started to love me a little bit again after that. And I really appreciated that. I really appreciated that she felt what I was saying. I don't know where that article is now. It was one of my Blaze Communications newsletters of a long time ago. But openly, when we have moments of time to forgive someone, to give them a shot at being in our life, why wouldn't we take it? I mean, are there so many people in your life demanding to be in your life that you don't have room for more people? That's something that I like to say because... We have these wonderful, silly commercials online of got peeps, I got peeps, you got peeps. And of course, they're talking about people, but I know that peeps is some sort of a candy too, so I've got to be careful about that. But hopefully what we're talking about is the love of God. If you love God, then you can forgive people. If you love Jesus, then you can open your hearts and minds and souls to a person's life story. If you believe in a divine architect, then you realize that maybe, just possibly, the divine Lord of all, whatever you choose to call that divine being who allegedly, reportedly, marketedly, if, if that's even a word, has produced an amazing book that's been with us for a millennium, and that's probably an exaggeration, but openly understands your life so well that he placed that person on your path to simply say, I love you. Are you done being mad at me yet? Now, there are legitimate reasons for people to be mad at someone provable reasons. There are also unprovable reasons that sometimes we're told something, that someone did something, what they didn't really do, and we're mad at them. And that's sort of a teenage concept that happened all the time in my time in high school, where literally people sort of stole stories and did things and did it just to have more power in someone else's life. But amongst mature adults, we literally either have the proof that someone did something or we don't. One of the challenging aspects of that concept is that we do have cyber stalkers that we don't ever get a chance to know who they are. We do have people that hit a person's life on some sort of moral grounds in their minds, but probably didn't ask God about whether that was okay. We also legitimately have people who love us without reason and people we don't love back in return that we're like, okay, you can love me, it's fine. And that's what we do in a fan base, right? I mean, there are actors that we adore, that we love to see their movies. We love to see little aspects of their life. We read a People magazine or whatever the heck the magazine is of the day that says something about their life and we pray and hope that that reporter did an actual accounting and a truthful telling of a story. I also know there's a lot of actors that don't like publicity, that don't want to talk about their lives because they feel they're entitled to privacy in their private life. And that is absolute truth. So when we're talking about these things, and when I'm talking about these things, when I say we, I'm hoping somebody's listening enough and that they're talking in their mind or God is leading them down a path of exchange of intelligent um, <coughs> conceptualization of whatever I'm talking about. But in reality, what I'm really saying is that we have moments of time to simply forgive people. We have moments of time to practice our faith that says, I believe in a forgiving Lord, therefore I will forgive other people. We have moments of time to practice the principles of that faith that says, look, if there's a discord, go and talk to that individual, 
make an appointment, schedule a play date, literally sit down in a place that will not have any interruptions, in a safe spot in public, even in a private room in a library, where there's still people around, but you've got a chance to talk quietly so that your privacy of your issues or your situation and literally just work it out. Use a whiteboard is what I like to say. We did that all the time in manufacturing where the different vendors would sit at the table across from one another and I literally was responsible for helping the uh, folks to understand each other in some regards in my interpretation duties which I'm long past being able to do anymore but what I'm saying is that by using a whiteboard, you can actually plot out, here's why I'm mad at you, here's what you did, here's what I heard, here's what you said, and you can lay it out, and then the other person can respond. And then you can literally do kind of a lining up of, okay, I can accept that, do you accept that? Or And you can work it through in a logical fashion. And that's what I encourage people to do in business. It's what I encourage people to do in their personal life. But not everybody will take the painstaking process of doing that and staying in a loving zone. Now, if a person has totally violated a person's human rights, civil rights, privacy rights, um, physical body rights, you name it, cellular health rights, um, you know, I'm sure there are physician rights out there, but they don't trump a person's right to their own body. So I'm just going to throw that out there because I'm kind of pissed off about a situation, really, but that I hear about and I know about and I've experienced in my own life. But let's talk about relationships. That's what we do. We talk about relationships. There are talk television shows with men and women talking about relationships all day long. Relationships build lives. Relationships produce spouses. Relationships produce friendships. Relationships produce business partners. Relationships produce money. Relationships produce sales. Relationships produce product receipt. I mean, let's face it. People are the revelation, the revelation of our world. I've been told recently that I am, that a per, my life, what was it? I'm trying to get it right. That, oh, a person's life didn't revolve around my life. I never said I was the son of anything. I'm the son of my father, Bill Anson. I'm proud to be his son. I'm proud how his life ended up. I'm proud for his love of God. I'm proud for his ability to share his wealth, the little bit that he had, with people he didn't know, impoverished, and children, and all sorts of military organizations that still contact my mom. But openly, I'm proud of that aspect of his generosity, of soul, of spirit, of how he cared for me, how he cared for my family, my Japanese family, that is, and openly how he loved me as his son. I'm proud to say I'm Bill Ensign's son. Now, in life, you have moments of time of pride. Moments of time of pride can also prevent us from forgiving people. You see, we have to literally get to the point of what really set you off, what really made an impact, what really made you know that something wasn't right, or did you actually get misinformation? You see, in a world of technology, there is something called social engineering, what literally can be utilized across any spectrum and space and time by not only technologists who work for the companies that we use our technology from, but also from other enforcement officers who can hack those technologies and pretend to be people. I've had several exchanges that didn't feel or, or seem anything like the person that I was talking to. I've definitely had times on the telephone when I've literally just point blank said, are you lawfully employed by that company? You see, we have to get to the law when we feel like we're being shystered over and being shammed and put in a silly situation or a mock situation or a harmful situation. Sometimes people forget they're employed places. In my situation, I'm basically self-employed because I'm possibly not employable based on my age demographic, based on my skill sets, based on how I've timed out of stuff at my age. Who knows? Based on the fact that I'm not meeting as many people since I don't have a vehicle anymore, something that I never thought in my wildest dreams would happen in my life. But there are people out there who'd like to make sure I don't get anywhere in life. Now, why is that? You could say, your life is not so important, I'm sure, is what I've been told by some siblings. And I'm like, you know, you don't walk my path every single day. You don't experience my experiences. And you cannot say that every little experience I have in life is tainted. I'm a trained journalist, for God's sakes. And what that means is I know there's three sides to a story. There's somebody else's side, there's my side, and there's, there's factual truth. I also know that we live in a land of liars. 
and that people will lie to protect their butt. CYA, cover your ass, if you will. Forgive me as being a lay pastor of saying that, but people do swear, and ass is a legitimate word. It means donkey. It also means behind. It means a lot of things. But socially constructed words are not the point that what I'm saying is that in life we have moments of time to provide forgiveness to someone who we thought was an ass in a moment of time. I lost the opportunity to propose to a girl because I led with the wrong gift that had sat in my closet for I don't know how many months as a part of a group and packages of gifts that were literally held in that closet for three years. So what can I say? I held out hope for three years, and I led with the wrong gift, and I got thrown off a porch, and I missed every moment of time since then because of that moment of time. I haven't forgotten that moment of time. I haven't forgotten what it felt like. I haven't forgotten what light she looked like. I haven't forgotten how she stood in the doorway. I haven't forgotten how she held the door closed with her legs. I haven't forgotten one little section of that. It was freezing rain. I was in my Outback hat when I still had it, which has since been retired, and openly in a leather coat that was not totally ripped the way that it is now. Same coat, just different day. Someone decided to cut it on me, which wasn't very fair, or when I slept. But that's life. <clears throat> there are haters in this world, and there are lovers in this world. And people in this moment of time have to decide, are you a person of peace or a person of hate? It's that simple. It's really that simple. Are you a person of peace or are you a person of hate? Because the Prince of Peace died for all our sins. And... The spirit of darkness is in you if you're hating on a person. If you're hating on a person and destroying their property and ruining their papers and bullying their life and pestering their bodies and doing all sorts of things without their permission, you're a person of hate. Now in life we have moments of time to make a difference and my suggestion to most people is in an area of discord, in a posi position of disharmony, simply stop and say, we're out of harmony. How do we get back to a harmonious state? We can have those comical things that I've used myself that says we can agree to disagree, but we can't agree to disagree about a person's life. They are fully entitled to their own life. No one has given you any rights to lord over someone's life. A person can lend you their life by giving you service. A person can give you their life by dying for you. A person can also give you their life by giving you their entire life insurance policy. Which means that if I go, I want you, my person that I love the most, to have this property to do with as you so choose after my demise. Have I made my point? I don't know. Because Jesus died for our sins, isn't that enough? Isn't that enough to create peace in someone's soul who's still struggling with something? You see, we have so much hate in this world that we've forgotten how to make peace. Maybe my next film should be Making Peace. I don't know. I sort of played with that today as a title of Heaven's Gate and of The Dragon Priest, which is literally a love story based on a faith fob experience and a priest who's literally ready to rage at the world, but he has to work it through of how do I find peace in my soul and be the proper person God has called me to be as a man. Thanks for listening. This is Blake Enson of Blaze Communications in an audio cast about the magic and mayhem of life, the magic of the Lord and the mayhem that people cause for failing to forgive and failing to make peace. <laughs>